sets out. Interest in the difficult art of leg spin bowling has certainly revived over the past decade, with many now wanting to investigate its subtleties and variations. One man regarded as the spin doctor to many great spin bowlers of the modern era is Terry Jenner, former South Australian and Australian wrist spinner. And he's here to pass on the basic skills of leg spin. Wrist spin is an extremely difficult art. Whilst trying to beat the batsman with flight and again with spin, we also have a very, very small target area in which to land the ball. The stock leg break will pitch in front of the batsman and then spin sharply towards slip. Ah! Gone straight to Mark Taylor. To bowl the leg break, it's important to have a good grip. With the seam running between the fingers, the spinning finger is the fourth finger on the hand, and the thumb either resting on the ball or off the ball. That's an, an option. And the fingers and wrist working together to generate spin, like that. If you spin the ball hard, it can drift in towards the right hander's leg stump and spin away sharply towards slip. Oh, he's bowled him around his legs. Bowled him round his legs. Well, that's ten for the match. So, recapping, remember the comfortable grip. This is the spinning finger. The thumb is an optional, on the ball or off the ball. Fingers and wrists combining together to impart the spin. And spin it as hard as you can and as often as you can. Because the more you practice, the more you improve. Healy took a gem of a catch. My word, isn't a girl having a good series? Well, you think that didn't turn? It pitched in uh, a little bit of rough, I think, outside the off stump, but it spun and turned. If your leg breaks spinning a lot and the batsman starts to get accustomed to the spin, then it's probably time for a bit of variation. And one of the variation balls is the top spinner or the over spinner. This ball looks a bit like the leg break, but when it lands, it often bounces above normal. And that can cause the batsman to be hit on the gloves, can cause bat pads if the men were around the bat, or even a high catch into the outfield. It's a very good delivery, and it's a nice one to have in your repertoire. And that's another. Dave Shepard, no problem. Puts the finger up, Stuart McGill, quicker one, probably the top spinner. To bowl the top spinner first, nice comfortable grip again. Thumb resting on or off the ball, again that is optional. So for the leg break the palm is facing towards the batsman. For the top spinner we move the wrist around facing away and the seam now facing the batsman. Again the fingers and wrist work together and then we spin it up and produce the top spinner which again in, introduces bounce. This action imparts overspin on the ball, which means that when it hits the pitch, it will hold its line and bounce up towards the batsman. So once again, recapping, the grip, same as for the leg break, thumb either resting or off the ball, only this time seam facing the batsman, fingers and wrist working towards the batsman, imparting the spin like so, and bouncing and getting that extra bounce off the pitch, and helps keep the batsman guessing. Another variation for the leg spin bowler is the wrongen, or the googly, or the bosey, known in all three terms. That's the one that uh, a batsman expects sooner or later to come from a leg spin bowler, and uh, whether it's sooner or later is up to the bowler. Ah! Bowled him, he's clean bowled him. 
That looked like a googly. Unlike the leg break, which spins from leg towards off, the wrongen pitches outside off and spins back towards middle. Okay, so grip, same as for the leg break. Thumb either resting just gently on the ball or off. In this particular instance, the wrist turns right around so that the back of the hand is facing towards the batsman. And from there you can see that the seam is facing in the direction you want the ball to spin. And then again, these fingers, working together with, in conjunction with the wrist, impart the spin, like so. Delivered with this wrist action, it will look similar to a leg break, turning towards slips. But instead, it'll go the other way. And they don't like that very much. Hey! Magnificent delivery from McGill. Well, he's kept that one in his kit bag for a while. And finally, producing a ball that the batsman had no idea about. He thought it was the leg break. It wasn't. OK, summing up. Grip. Nice and comfortable. Thumb resting on or off the ball. No thumb pressure. The wrist turned around so it's facing the batsman. And that way we get the seam already facing in the direction we want the ball to spin. Fingers and wrist, again, working very hard so that on release, we get that spin. So let me so show you again. We get that spin like so. Difficult ball to bowl, requires a lot of practice. Don't get frustrated if you don't do it early in your spinning career. But remember this, don't do it so often you lose your leg break because you are a leg spin bowler. Oh, here's the wrong end. This has got to be close. He's given him a long look from Rudy Kirchen. Alakapali makes a pair. Hello. Leg spin isn't the only form of slow bowling that can bamboozle batsmen. So too can off spin. And a man who knows its subtleties is former Australian and New South Wales finger spinner Gavin Robertson. Like a leg spinner, if the off spinner can deceive the batsman into misreading the bounce, he's taken a huge step into getting the batsman out. The off his top spinner will look like his usual delivery in flight, but instead of moving off the pitch, it will hold its line and hopefully find an outside edge. Oh, he's got him caught behind. Yes, he's walking. A little nick there. We might see that was the top spinner, I suspect. Indeed it was, and a very good one too. It's skittered, just got a little bit of bounce. To achieve this, I want the ball to pitch middle stump and continue on its own path. My grip for the top spinner is exactly the same as the off break. The back of your wrist should be facing behind you. But for the top spinner, it moves around towards the mid-wicket region. Keeping the seam upright, and you spin the ball towards the wicket, continuing on its own path. As the fingers roll over the top of the ball, it will gain pace and bounce. This ball is delivered from the bowler's highest delivery point, giving you maximum top spin. So once again, the grip for the top spinner is exactly the same as the off break, but you must have your wrist facing mid wicket. The top spin is a great ball because all day long you're bowling off break, moving left to right. But when you bowl your top spinner and continues on towards the stumps, you're a good chance of getting a nick or an LBW. Ah! Got him, has he? Has, yes. That's a big wicket. Owen Moore gets two. Off-spin bowling relies on patience as much as skill to achieve results. Subtle variations are imperative to work batsmen out, but of course the off-spinner's stock delivery is the off-break. This ball will turn into the batsman, often with the bowler varying his pace, line and flight. Ah! Bowled him! What a ripper! Beat him in flight, got him forward and Tim May bowls getting for five. It's two for 50. Just watch the amount of spin May gets on this ball. 
that is one beautiful delivery, I'm here to tell you. To achieve this, I try and pitch the ball outside off stump and spin towards middle stump. My grip for the off spinner is I use my main index finger and my middle finger sitting across the seam. I try and turn the doorknob and spin the ball towards backward square leg. The spin imparted on the ball shall hopefully make it pitch outside off stump and spin sharply back at the batsman. The bowler is looking to find the gap between bat and pad or an inside edge onto the pads which could pop up for a close in catcher. Yes, he's got him. So once again, the grip for the off spinner. Using your main index finger and your middle finger, sitting across the seam, turning the doorknob at 45 degrees. The off spinner is your bread and butter ball. It's the one you've got to be consistent with, and it's the one you always rely on. Yeah. Yeah, he's gone. Yes, he's got him. No, that's the damage. A well-delivered arm ball is the type of delivery that can cause the batsman to end up in two minds. Its change of pace can often cause the batsman to end up in the wrong position. The well-delivered arm ball will drift gently in the air, generally away from the batsman, and continue on towards the slips. Got him. Yes, beautiful piece of bowling, the arm ball. It went on and Taylor took a very sharp catch. Just reward for Tim May's ball beautifully. To achieve this, I try and pitch the ball on middle stump and take it away to first slip. My normal grip is like that. For my arm ball, I change it and I use the main index finger to pull down on the seam and make the seam stay upright as it goes down towards the wicket and fade away to first slip. The spin imparted on the ball shall hopefully make it slowly drift across middle stump towards first slip. This action should give us the desired movement. Just caught him in no man's land, then Hilly was a bit lucky to get away with that. And once again, the grip for the arm ball, you must use your index finger, pulling down on the seam, keeping the seam upright. She's a real tough ball to bowl, and you're going to have to practice very, very hard to get it right. Ah! Big shout, he's been given out. Umpire Davis says, yes, that's out. Mark Butcher doesn't seem able to believe it.